There's nothing quite like looking at a portrait by Modigliani, and this is not because they are exceedingly beautiful, but because they are so strange. Who is this alien looking out from within the canvas? What world is he from? What does he think? Does he think anything? And what did Modigliani see in a peasant from Nice in 1919 to represent him in this way? The elongated nose, the simplified face, the dynamic brushwork, but above all the eyes. The blue eyes that are the same colour as the background, as though you can see through the holes where his eyes should be to the wall behind. It is said that the eyes are the windows to the soul. Without them, it is impossible to tell if this boy has one. I am desperate to understand those eyes. I've already discussed the eyes of a sitter in the portrait of a peasant. How for me, it makes him feel lifeless and soulless. But then what does it mean when he makes them different colours from one another, or different colours to the wall? And what about an individual motivates him to paint the eyes in a more naturalistic way? I'm not going to pretend I have a solution to this problem, but I find it interesting to go down certain rabbit holes to come up with some theories, and so that's what I'm going to do today. Modigliani starts to represent eyes in his characteristic way, from about 1910, at the start of his sculpture period. Since he represents eyes in a similar way through his sculpture, it is reasonable to suspect that the meaning of his strange eyes can be derived from the meaning of his sculpture. Modigliani's sculptures tend to be heads. They don't always look wildly different to his portraits, but they do contain one crucial difference. They don't represent anyone in particular. Instead, they seem to represent a kind of universal essence of humanity by incorporating artistic styles from ancient Greece, medieval Italy, African tribal masks, oceanic sculpture, and a number of others. His sculpture is a vessel that contains the human image through all of space and all of time. So could thinking about his sculpture in this way hold the key to understanding his representation of the eyes in his painting? It might be possible to argue that removing the eyes removes a bit of the sitter's individuality and temporality. As has been discussed already, it takes away the individual's perceivable spirit, making him or her appear more generalised. This portrait sees as being an individual, Instead, he embodies all boys at his age. Yet, in his portrait of a peasant, he has represented the clothes that place this individual in a specific point in time and space and society. So we must extend this theory. This figure may well be a representation of young peasant boys in France at that time. The figure represents the collective human experience of all peasant boys. Such a theory seems encouraging at this point, but it does get more complicated when we consider that Modigliani frequently represented individuals that he knew, his friends, his lovers, and some of the movers and shakers of the avant-garde art scene in Paris, including Picasso twice. If the desire was to capture man in general, or a specific type of person, why would he choose to represent high-profile individuals? Another thing to consider here is that the people he represented were people that Modigliani generally had some kind of feeling towards, whether it be love, resentment, jealousy, admiration. As a result, we might expect a modern artist to express his subjectivity through distortion. Maybe we could see the large eyes represented in his portrait of Jeanne Houbertin, the mother of his child, as a compliment to her. Maybe he's saying that she has a soul or that he knows her soul. Yet there are also portraits of Jean Houbertin without eyes, looking just as alien and disconnected from the beholder as Modigliani's portrait of a young peasant. Similarly, in his portraits of Picasso, one displays a cheeky expression with piercing, confrontational eyes. This makes sense considering that Modigliani understood Picasso to be the greatest genius of his generation. Yet another portrait in dramatic contrast appears without eyes. 
Picasso's basic features remain, but he has been simplified to the point where his individuality is compromised. He appears more generic. This inconsistency makes it difficult to feel comfortable with any one theory that can explain his thinking process behind representing eyes. But did Modigliani talk about his art in any way that could help us out? Well, sort of. Little of what Modigliani said and wrote has come down to us, but there is one quote that at least reveals something. Allegedly, Modigliani told a friend that you look out to the world with one eye and into yourself with the other. This was said to serve as an explanation for the paintings that Modigliani painted between 1914 to 1915, where the sitters have one eye. That's all fine and well as an explanation for paintings like this, but it doesn't really help with paintings like this. A final possibility may come from Modigliani's obsession with tribal masks. Modigliani was fascinated by these things, as was many of the artists working in Paris at that time. It seems as though he actually distorted the individuals he portrayed to look more like those masks. And this could explain his decision to make the space where eyes should be a single block of colour or void. However, I don't think Modigliani transformed his sitters to look like tribal masks for the sake of it. Given the kind of literature he was reading, he was clearly interested in the psychological focus that many Western artists had towards these masks. These masks were understood to represent human instinct, since their creation was by a society that was perceived to be at an earlier stage of development. For the early 20th century Western artists, tribal masks were a way to understand how the original man thinks before a complex education transforms an individual. When we consider his motivations for treating his sitters with a similar aesthetic to the tribal masks that he was studying, there isn't a really clear reason to paint eyes in this way. Neither does it help us to understand why he sometimes represented the eyes in a more regular way. Really, this video was not intended to solve a problem, but to make you aware of one that I find particularly fascinating. It is my contention that the kind of themes and ideas that we've discussed in this video is exactly the sort of thing that Modigliani had in his mind when it came to producing his art, but that in the moment he didn't rely on a formula. Instead, he gave expression to his own instinct, let his own whims dictate various aspects of the paintings. If his intention was to understand his own instinct, his own primal self, then this would have been a crucial element of his art. Hope you enjoyed the video today, I know it was a little bit more challenging than the stuff that I normally talk about, but when it comes to Modigliani I like to go a little bit deeper, he's an artist that has particularly fascinated me for a long time, and in fact I wrote my dissertation on him in my undergraduate degree. Thanks so much for watching, stay tuned for the next one, and please take care of yourself at this tricky, tricky time.